morning everyone my name is Carla and you have reached my floss tube channel Carla being crafty where I talk about mostly cross stitch but also other crafts that I enjoy and a little bit of life thrown in uh, today is Sunday August 21st welcome if this is your first time finding my channel then I hope that you like what you see want to hit like and subscribe and all of that good stuff um, and if you are a returning viewer then thank you so much for coming and sharing this time with me um, I do a video every Sunday, uh, barring any weirdness that happens, which doesn't happen too often. So I, I can pretty much say I do a video every Sunday and then I have extra videos that go up on Wednesdays sometimes. Um, sometimes I'm great and I do one every week and then sometimes, uh, I have a huge long hiatus and, uh, you won't see one for a couple months, but, um, I kind of decided when I do do extra videos that I'm just going to always upload them on Wednesdays. So, um, that is kind of my little schedule. Um, I said it was Sunday, right? Yeah. Sunday, August 21st. Um, it is really overcast outside right now. Um, it is still warm, but, um, yeah, it's overcast. It's supposed to be overcast in the mornings today and tomorrow. Um, but it should burn off around 11. That's what usually happens. Um, our weather has been hot, uh, uncomfortably hot as usual. Um, my apartment gets really hot. So even, you know, so even when it cools off in the evening, um, I'm not getting the benefit of that. Um, I would love to have my windows wide open, but the way my apartment is situated, um, my big bank of windows is right along the walkway uh, for my second floor apartment. And it's just, it's right there. It's just right where anybody walking past could, you know, punch through. And I don't know, it, it, it just doesn't make me feel secure to have my windows open like at night or anything like that. Um, I do put them open on the weekends during the day sometimes. Um, but again, because of where they're situated, that afternoon sun just like bakes my apartment. So I definitely have to have the windows closed and, and shades drawn and everything between like two and six because that's when it gets really hot. Um, but as I was saying, it's right, it's overcast right now. Um, I guess technically our weather has been getting cooler. It has been sort of like mid to high eighties instead of mid to high nineties, which I guess is a big difference. Um, it, it just, it still feels hot to me. <coughs> still feels hot. Um, Health wise, I am getting better um, day by day. Basically, whatever's left from my I have a respiratory infection that I had several weeks ago is just I have the cough, particularly cough still. It's not like a chest cough, it's just that, that tickly thing and just being a little bit worn out still. Um, that isn't really anything unusual for that kind of cough to hang on for me. Um, it always has my whole life, first of all, but then second of all, um, I do take some medications and stuff that tend to cause kind of like a dry cough anyway. And um, I've always had that kind of post nasally drip sort of thing. So it, it just totally makes sense that that's what's gonna hang on for a while. Um, I did discover something though. If any of you guys have that kind of tickly cough for because of medications or, um, I'm not gonna say if you're a smoker because I'm not a smoker and I don't think you should be, but um, if you do have a dry cough because of that, I know also like people who have gone through um, certain types of chemo and stuff like that are left with that dry cough forever. Um, I found these, they're technically they're candy. They're not, you know, they're not a medicine, but they're Himalaya salt candy. So it's a lemon mint salt candy. And first of all, I think the lemon and salt candy is delicious and I have another lemon salt candy that I've gotten, but I saw these and these have that extra mintiness to them. And for some reason, these things work so well to soothe my throat. Like if I start getting that tickly cough, I take one of these or, you know, I start eating one of these, sucking on it and, uh, it really soothes it. Um, and it, these are, these are billed as a sports candy. Um, it says that they're meant to increase hydration, throat soothing, and fresh breath. Um, I guess because of the lemon and salt, it makes you salivate, so it helps if you have dry mouth. Um, the mint does add a cooling thing for your throat, and I don't know, the lemon salt just seems to really uh, soothe that kind of tickle that I get. So I just thought I'd tell you guys about them. I got them on Amazon. Um, something that is a little weird, but 
for whatever reason, they work really well for me. Okay, uh, so last Monday was my birthday. Um, it was really nice overall. I had, you know, a nice weekend that I talked to you guys about last week. And then Sunday night after my video, I went and I met Aaron and Stacy and the three kids for dinner at a spaghetti restaurant right by me. Um, totally fun. We had a couple hours of uh, chit chatting and I can always tell when I haven't seen the kids in a few weeks because everybody wants my attention all at one time. Uh, which is funny because I'm trying to be the attentive aunt and pay attention when somebody's talking to me, but then I have three of them that are talking to me at one time. So that's always challenging, but um, it was nice. It's nice to, you know, have everybody want to sit next to you. It doesn't happen all the time, but it, it did happen on my birthday and it was nice. Um, so I had a really good dinner. And then on Monday, which was my actual birthday, um, I went out to lunch with my boss and, and two co co-workers. That's totally a tradition in our office. Um, well, actually, we go out to lunch. I'm not going to say a lot, but we go out to lunch fairly often just because, uh, you know, if my boss feels like going out to lunch, she takes us out to lunch. And, you know, that happens maybe once a month or so. Um, but we definitely always go out for birthdays and, like, you know, the holiday season and stuff like that. Um, so we went out for lunch, and it was it was very delicious. Um, and, um, then after work, uh, my friends and I from work, we have been planning, we've been planning this for like months. There's a Elks Lodge that's kind of near our, our office that does, um, bingo on Monday night. So I guess the Elks Lodge does all do bingo, but they all, like the different ones have different nights. So the one by our office is Monday night. So we've been planning to go and try that for months and months and months. And it just hadn't happened, you know, um. I had that leg thing for a while and I had to go to the doctor every day after work. So that blew that. And then my friend was out of town for like a month and then she got sick and then I got sick. So anyway, it, it's been a long time coming. And so we finally decided for my birthday, we would go and try and pay, play bingo, which I've done before like 10 years ago, whatever, but, um, we had a really good time. Um, it's definitely something I would do again. I mean, you know, yes, we kind of, I felt like it was kind of funny to be like, oh, we're playing bingo on my birthday. Like I've entered into, I'm an old lady or whatever, but, um, it was fun. None of us won. Actually, that's not true. My friend Lita, she won 25 cents on some pull apart thing. Um, no 50 cents. Excuse me. Let's get it right. She got 50 cents and then got another little tickety thing. And that was that. Uh, so none of us won. Um, but we did have a good time and definitely I want to do it again. And I was in fact telling Stacy that we should try and find one that's more near her or in the middle of us and, and try it. And I think there's an Elks Lodge near her that does it on Wednesday. So maybe I'll go do bingo again. Um, cause it was fun. It was something different to do. Um, I did wear my mask. Um, my friend, when I was telling her we were going to go do that was all concerned because you know, you're in a big room with a bunch of strangers. Um, we had switched tables actually. So I was wearing my mask at the first table where we were surrounded by strangers, but then, um, those people are a little bit, um, I do have to say they're a little predatory. So I got there with, uh, with my friend Linda and we were waiting for our other friend, but you know, we weren't like waiting outside. We went in and, and we didn't know for sure if she was going to show up or whatever. So, um, we were trying to get seats and even though there were empty seats, people were like stretched out on three you know, three places and they wouldn't, they, they wouldn't, uh, um, share. So we found a table that had two empty seats, but we were like, well, what's going to happen when, when Lita gets here? So they actually opened up another table and we were able to move there. And on the other table, it was just the three of us. So that was kind of fun because we didn't have to worry about sitting with strangers and stuff like that. Um, okay. So let's see what else is going on. So tomorrow, starting tomorrow morning is when finally they're doing my half of my apartment complex, the asphalting, uh, which has just been a big ongoing drama, if you want to call it that. Um, but so I have to be, actually, it's not me and it's not my apartment. My car has to be out of its parking space, out of the area by seven o'clock in the morning. So I have to leave an hour early. Hey, baby. You want to say hi? Do you guys want to see baggy pants? Come here. Oh, oh, here's the baggy. Here's the baggy wants to say hi. 
he and I did a video this week. Um, the Cat Lady Boxes unboxing. I had two boxes actually because I hadn't done one in a while. He had a total, total blast doing it, I feel like. And um, so I'm going to upload that on Wednesday. Um, I did grass. What was I talking about? Oh, the asphalting. So it's not that I can't be in my apartment, but my car can't be here, which basically if my car can't be here, you know, I can't be here because I have no way to get in and out unless somebody's going to pick me up and I have to find some places for my car. So it's, it's, you know, it's a pain. So I have to be out of the carport area, um, by seven tomorrow morning. And then I can't park here again until Thursday. So tomorrow night after work, I'm going to go to Aaron and Stacy's um, and spend the night and then drive to work from there, which is, you know, going to be a bit of a, a traffic situation that I'm not used to. Um, it's about half an hour to their house. I have no idea what it's going to be like in the morning. Um, so that will be interesting. And then Tuesday, in the middle of the day, what I'm planning on doing is coming back home. Um, because if it's in the middle of the day when people are at work, I should be able to park on the street. So I can come in and check on Baggy and, um, you know, maybe get a change of clothes, whatever. Um, and then uh, Tuesday night, I'm going to go to Aaron's again. Now, Wednesday, um, I thought I was going to be able to park Wednesday because they said it's supposed to be done Wednesday. But we just got a notice yesterday saying that they're supposed to be done at 6 on Wednesday, but you can't park until Thursday. But I think it's going to be okay because normally I get off work early on Wednesdays anyway. So if I get off at 3, I think again that I'll be able to get a street parking space. There's very limited street parking by me. And, um, you know, if I came home my regular time, there would be none. But I think if I'm coming home at 3 that I will be able to get a street parking space on Wednesday night. I'm hoping. And then, um, then I can, you know, then things will be normal. I'll just stay at home. If for some reason I can't get a parking space, I will just let Aaron and Stacey know. And I, I think I can probably go back over there to sleep on Wednesday night. Um, but for whatever reason, this thing is causing me so much anxiety. I mean, I know I have a plan. I, you know, Baggy's not going to be like alone for three days. So I don't have to worry about that. I mean, I'm going to come in and check on him. I can give him food for several days and he's fine anyway. Um... But just the entire situation is just causing me massive amounts of anxiety. It's really hard for me. And I have noticed, I don't know, I don't know if it's an aging thing. Honestly, I don't know if it's menopause or if it's the fact of my divorce or the pandemic or whatever. But I just feel like in the last six, eight years, my ability to just deal, deal with the crap that life sends and my ability to roll with the punches I mean I deal with it but I just have more anxiety and stress than I used to and I just feel like when I have anxiety and stress I I, I get like paralyzed like I can't do anything I, I don't know if anybody else has that and it's like I don't want to get into a big mental health discussion but it's just yeah I just feel like I get super anxious about stuff like this, especially stuff having to do with my living situation and, you know, people coming into my apartment or I have to be out of my apartment or stuff like that. It just causes me high, high, high anxiety. And, um, and like I said, having that high anxiety doesn't give me energy to like get stuff done and solve the problems. It just kind of paralyzes me and I sit in a lump and, you know, feel stressed. <laughs> so I'm going to try and like, Deal today, I mean, I need to just kind of, I have my going to Erin and Stacey's bag that I have put together all the time anyway. Um, I just need to throw some like underwear in that, maybe a t-shirt. I mean, whatever clothes I wear tomorrow to work, I'm going to wear the same pants and I'm just going to take a different top with me. Um, I have my basic toiletries over there already, that kind of thing. Um, but it's just, it's really causing me stress. And I mean, it sounds, it sounds stupid. I, I, I talk about it and I'm almost ashamed because why am I being stressed over something that's all taken care of, you know? Um, but it is, it's causing me a lot of stress. Um, and then being sick lately, that is adding to my anxiety. I feel like my apartment is just, just a mess. And I just 
don't have the energy, the the oomph to do anything about it. Like yesterday, I had all these plans. I was gonna, you know, stitch, and every every half hour, I was gonna get up and do this little bit and that little bit. I did nothing, nothing yesterday. I mean, it was just, you know, I was sti I stitched. I stitched a lot actually. But, you know, I would stitch and look up and it's like, you know, four o'clock in the afternoon. It's like, how did that happen? I don't know. I don't know. So do you guys deal with that? Am I, am I alone in this world of, of just, am I not rolling with the punches or not feeling like I roll with the punches as well as I used to? I don't know. I don't know what it is. Okay. So, um, oh. I know a lot of people, when you wear a t-shirt or something that has stuff on it, they want to know what it is. So I got this in my Cat Lady box unboxing that you'll see on Wednesday if you watch. Uh, it says Feline Paralysis, and I can't read it backwards. Um, but it's basically the uh, inability to move because you have a cat sitting on you. Um, so I'm sure a lot of uh, a lot of stitchers out there know that with cats and dogs who decide that your lap is the place to be. Okay. Um... I think that's all of my preamble. I didn't do any little golden book stuff, which is again, stressing me out because I need to get some of that stuff done. Um, especially if I want to give some away this, this holiday season and I wanted to do videos on it. So I keep bringing it in my head how I'm going to do it. Um, I just haven't yet. So, um, you know, you guys will know as soon as I do. Um, I also have the two books that I need to send to my best friend and the uh, bird um, that I finished, I still need to iron that. And um, so eventually I'll get it together. Hopefully I'll get it to them by her birthday, which is uh, next month. So um, I have that deadline. Um, okay. I think that's it. I think that's it. I can show you my stitching now. Um, so I did stitch on the Stitching the Situation project this week. Um, Again, if you haven't been watching my videos or you don't know about this, this is an art project that was started, um, I think in the, I think in the Portland, Oregon area. Um, I could be wrong. I don't want to say Portland or Seattle, which are two completely different states. I don't know. But I think it's Portland. Um, the artist is Heather Schulte. Uh, she lost an uncle to COVID uh, pretty early on, and she started this project, which is basically... Um, blocks of stitching um, representing each day of the pandemic and the way it's done is um, there is a big blue square that uh, the stitcher can complete however they want the only requirement is that it has to be blue it has to be three strands on the fabric that she gives and um, and the date needs to be stitched on it in some way um, and then at the top corner, there is a red box, which, so the blue box represents the number of new cases that were reported that day. And the red box in the corner represents the number of people who died from COVID that day. Um, I am doing the January 29th, 2021 box, which is the day that my mom passed away. Um, when I first heard about this project and contacted the artist to participate, um, and I told her kind of my story, she had said that she would be happy to give me that block, but it was a huge block. Um, I reached out to my community here and I've gotten so many people who are like, we'll stitch on it with you. Um, so it still is a very overwhelming sort of project, but I know that I have a bunch of people out there that are willing to stitch on it. Um, and it's not like, you know, it's not expected to be done quickly. Um, and it won't be done quickly. This is going to be a several year project. Definitely. Um, so I did work on it. I got the top border finished, um, started on the side border down here. So I still have the bottom and the side border to finish. It is important that I get the borders done just because I need to wash this fabric. This is a 14 count Ada. Um, the artist has even said this is horrible fabric. Um, it's extremely stiff. And, but she, you know, she has to get it in bulk and this is what's available. So it's a 14 count Ada. Um, she does want everybody to stitch with three strands, which I kind of hate. Um, so it's not necessarily an enjoyable stitch, um, partly because of the subject matter, partly because 
physically it's just not comfortable for me to stitch which I hate to say because I want you guys to all stitch on it um so I you know I hate to say like oh it's it's hard and difficult and unfun you know when I want you to work on it with me but um I'm just being honest but I think it will help a lot when I can wash it which I can't do until I get the border done because I can't take the risk of washing off the marking that she put on it because that's the exact number of stitches so it's really important each stitch is done because each stitch represents a person so I showed before I had finished well I didn't finish but I finished the stitching part on the red square this has to be filled in with the pink um, when I pass it on I probably I have that pink in the bag so if anybody wants to stitch on border they can as I said I worked some more on the border and then I worked some more on the center wreath that I am doing um, it's basically going to be a big floral wreath that has a fancy R in the middle for Rosalyn which is my mom's name and then when I pass it along um, people can stitch border can stitch whatever they want really um, make it look pretty so I mean obviously it's gonna be a while before it's ready to go anywhere um, I think Stacy is going to do the um, the date for me which I charted out so it's gonna be kind of towards the bottom fifth or whatever um, I think I'm gonna bring this with me tomorrow um, just so Stacy can see it and um, yeah so I did work on that this week um, and I will give you guys updates as I have them on that okay so, just drop my big thing of water. Okay, so technically, I mean, I guess that is a whip, but I don't, it's sort of different. It's a project, not a whip, if that makes any sense. It's, it probably doesn't. Okay, um, let's see. I worked on my Midnight Meow, which is my black cat birthday sal uh, for this year. Um, I started stitching in 2019, and in 2019, I started a couple things, a couple like traditions or something that I've kept up with. Um, in August, I have two starts. Uh, one is a uh, black cat project, um, and then it has a hashtag black cat birthday sale for anybody that wants to join in. And then I also usually stitch some kind of a lion in August for my birthday. And then in February, I do um, my Be My Own Valentine sale. Um, okay, so. I got some more done on Midnight Meow, which is my Black Cat birthday sale for 2022. Um, I actually did a little bit of beading on it because I just kind of wanted to see what the wings were going to look like. So, can you see the beads on that side? This is a, a free Mirabilia pattern, um, but it isn't on the website, so you do have to get it from an LNS, I think. I got mine from Stitcher's Paradise. In Las Vegas um, they had the model stitched and I was like that's cute and she's like oh it's a free chart here so I mean if you don't know to ask you wouldn't know so ask <laughs> okay let's see so yesterday um, yesterday morning I watched uh, stitching at the cabin um, with Julie Alyssa is now on official maternity leave and um, you know, has made noises about she doesn't know she's going to come back and do videos, but it's okay because Julie's doing them and Julie's learned to edit and all that kind of stuff, which cracks me up because they talk about editing and I don't edit at all. <laughs> oh, well. Um, but uh, anyway, so I was watching her and she was showing her uh, Twisted Band sampler, which made me think about my Rainbow Band sampler, which I haven't stitched on in a long time, so I pulled that out and I worked on that for a good amount of time yesterday, but towards the end of the evening, um, I was getting a little tired of it and it, it, it was requiring more concentration than I had in me at the moment. So I pulled out my tulips and fans and worked on this. And I actually did a whole other square. So I know this is a favorite. Um, when I'm done with this, of course, I will be passing the pattern on to Jolie because she and I have kind of a 
informal trading agreement with all of our county canvas projects. She just bought like a couple patterns that I had never seen before. These, um, one I think was lilacs, that they're gorgeous. And I'm like, hurry up and do those because I would love to have those patterns. I was like, I should go see where they are. And I'm like, no, I can't buy them because I'm eventually going to get them. And it's not like I'm uh, dying for something to stitch at the moment. I have a few projects on the go. So this is Tulips and Fans by, from, Nan from Nancy's Needle? Yeah, from Nancy's Needle. Okay. And then as I said, I was stitching on the Rainbow Band Sampler. Which, no, it's Twisted Rainbow Sampler. This is rainbow sample. Okay. So I changed, I didn't change the colors exactly. Well, I did. Okay. So I decided I want to stitch this in sulky and I'm stitching it on like a charcoal because black is just too much for me to handle. The charcoal is bad enough. So I'm stitching it in sulky and I'm stitching it in many more colors than are called for because I'm also dividing it in the middle. So, it would help if I held it the right way, right? Okay, so this is actually the end. There's like, this specialty row has, you know, two more rows, so like that's the end. Um, so as you can see, I'm dividing it down here, so when it gets to here, which, you know, this is long. There's going to be actually, I think, two splits where the colors will shift. So kind of here it's light, dark, and then when it goes down here, it'll be dark, light, um, and then light, dark again. Um, makes sense in my head. I don't know if it makes sense to you guys. So instead of like 18 colors, I'm using 36 colors of Sulky on this charcoal Lugana, I think it is. Um, this is super enjoyable to do. Um, the specialty stitches can be, excuse my language, a bitch. And um, I guess depending on the specialty stitch. So these, what are they called? Norwich stitch. These Norwich stitches over five are so difficult for me to do, to see, and they look like awful like there's some on here that are so bad they just look like I just closed my eyes and stuck the needle and thread in um, some of them I have taken out I had some problems with the first band but it wasn't that bad this band these Norwich stitches are just so difficult and let me see if I hold them really close but okay but here's the thing I'm learning as I go um, and I'm just not that precise of a stitcher. Um, you guys flatter me all the time and say everything I do is so pretty and I'm such, you know, every, uh, trust me, I'm not that good or precise of a stitcher. Um, I'm creative. I'm not going to like knock myself that way. I am creative, but I'm not that precise. And with stuff like this, where these stitches are difficult, some of them look great and some of them look so bad. Um, occasionally I will pull one out and try again, but I am not going to spend five years trying to do these stitches. Um, because you know what, when the sampler's done and it's off on the wall, nobody, including myself, is going to come in and look at each individual little Norwich stitch and say, oh, that one's all wonky. Um, <laughs> so I am kind of letting it go, you know, I mean, I want to do them correctly and I do have a magnifying glass for when the stitches are really difficult for me to see. Um, in theory, they're not hard to do. I mean, it's just a pattern, right? You go up this hole, go down that hole. That isn't hard. It's seeing the holes and, you know, and the holes seeming to disappear when you're in the middle of the stitch. <laughs> but you know what? I'm just not going to worry about it. So this is what it's looking like now. If I hold it up close, you guys can see all of the little mistakes. Like this, there's one down here that's, it's like not even square. 
It's it's so bad. Um, I'm not worrying about it. <laughs> I'm just not gonna. Um, so anyway, I worked on this yesterday, um, and I'm liking how it's looking. Um, it's fun to do the specialty stitches. It's going to be challenging, I think, when I get um, my uh, shadowing stuff because I know there's stitches involved with that. But again, it's all a learning process, right? Um, so my Norwich stitches look like crap. My Norwich stitches look like crap. And that's okay. It's okay. So, yeah. So, worked on that yesterday. Crappy Norwich stitches and all. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. What else? Um, oh. I worked on Enchantress of the Abyss. Which is Bella Filipina. Beautiful, beautiful mermaid. Um, it's funny because when I'm working on um, Autumn Equinox Pixie, it feels more like there's big blocks of color. This feels pretty confetti heavy. Um, I'm a, it's, I think it must just be this pattern. Um, but I worked on this all evening and it, it you know, it's like you can't really see what I did. Well, you can, but okay. So here she is. Um, actually, I did complete, I think it was, it's this, this hair floof. Um, and then this little one I did. And then I did a bunch of stitching in here. Um, I just think she's going to be so pretty when she's done, um, whenever that may be. Because I tend to work on mermaids and stuff in the summer when it's hot, and then when fall comes around, then I don't work on the mermaids as much. So, um, so she may, you know, after September, she may kind of go to sleep for a while until, <laughs> until next summer. Um, but she's so pretty. I do really enjoy her. Okay, um, that was Enchantress of the Abyss. I did work on the mini flower kitty, um, which is a heaven and earth design. By Jeremiah Ka Kent Ketchner. I finished a diagonal that I was on. This one is on 28 count fabric and I'm doing it two over one tent, um, which I've said before, I really like. You'll notice that um, this is not on um, an easy guide and I didn't, I didn't put grid lines or anything. When I first started doing, um, full coverage and with the parking, um, I thought, oh gosh, I need those grid lines. And you know, on the fabric that I am doing one on that I didn't, that I wasn't using the easy guide, I made the grid lines. And this one, I was just too lazy to do it. And honestly, I'm not having any trouble. So I don't know if I'll have to use that in the future or not. But I am really liking the 28 uh, 2 over 1 tent. I like the way it looks. Um, I have no problem with coverage. I've never been the kind of person that has problem with coverage anyway. And um, it makes it go a lot faster. I'll tell you, doing the three over one on the stitching situation, I hate it. Um, talk about stitches looking horrible. They do. I don't, I mean, partly because the fabric is so difficult to work with. It's like, I can't, I can't railroad. I can't do anything. I'm just trying to get the needle in and out of this fabric. And it, I don't think that the stitches look great, but you know what? 
it is what it is. I'm following the instructions of what the artist wants and um, it wouldn't be my choice to use three over one ever. Um, but that's how it is. Okay. And last but not least. Okay. And I need to take this off of the, oops. Um, this is my uh, Mirabilia. Uh, Mediterranean mermaid conversion. I always show the picture and I feel like it's gotten so far from the picture it doesn't even reference but that's the Mediterranean mermaid as charted by Mirabilia with the urn or vase that I always thought was a fish and apparently I wasn't the only one. <laughs> um, and I am turning her into Ariel the Little Mermaid. Sorry I should have prepared this ahead of time but I did not. So I worked on this actually a couple days this week and um, I got to the point that I just I really wanted to start doing some beading on it. Um, so I did. So I'm not done with the stitching. I still have the rest of the tail to do. But as I said, oh, I was... wanting to bead, which is why I put on the squirrel rods, because if it's on the squirrel rods, I can bead and then move it without having to worry about smushing the beads or breaking them. Okay, so here's the wide angle view. And then let me roll it a little. So, okay, so I added the bubble beads um, and then I added beads to her hair. So the ends, the ends of her hair all have uh, little red beads. And then I added those little flowers that I showed you guys a while ago to her hair. I think those look really pretty. And then I started beating in the tail. Not a lot of beating in the tail done yet, but. So I think she is just exceeding my expectations of how pretty she is. This fabric never shows up nice on camera or on um, photos. It always looks grayed out and it's really very blue with purples and greens and stuff. It's really pretty fabric, but it just never shows up nice. Um, now, as I, I think I told you guys this, I posted this in uh, on Facebook in a uh, Mirabilia conversion Facebook group. And a lot of people have said, are you going to post the conversion? And where did you get the conversion? And blah, blah, blah. So I charted Flounder myself. And the conversion, everything else I'm doing is kind of, I'm just doing it in my head. Um, and the problem is that I don't know how I could possibly share a conversion without um, breaking copyright as far as the Mirabilia pattern. I just don't know how that works. And if anybody has done that and has an idea for me, um, in addition to that, to be honest, I just kind of like grabbed a bunch of colors that were the colors I wanted that matched Ariel. I, the hair, I could very easily give you guys numbers or write down, okay, I substituted this color for this color and this color for this color. I oftentimes, I, I used one color for more than one symbol if the symbol was not used very often. Um, but the tail, I, you know, I just think it's gonna be really hard to kind of write that down and make any sense. On top of which, that it's it's all Rainbow Gallery and Krynik and um, and some weird stuff that I just had from Stash that I've gotten from, um, you know, from like eBay stuff. So I don't even know if it's stuff that's easily obtainable, um, like weird Rainbow Gallery things. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm not... I don't have any problem sharing what I've done, but I do have a problem with 
possibly, you know, breaking copyright. I certainly don't want to do that. And, um, you know, and some of it is just like, like with the hair. Okay. I took off like whatever crowny thing. Um, where is it? In the picture. So I don't know if you can see very well, but she's charted with kind of like this crown headdress thing. And I didn't want to do that, so I took it off. And when I took it off, she looked like she had a helmet head. So I just added stitches to make her hair look a little bit more natural and a little bit more how Ariel has that sweep. Um, so that wasn't like charted. I just did it with my needle when I was on there, you know? Um, and then the, the pattern has this whole fin that comes out here and I cut that whole thing out. And so I had to kind of just, um, pull the bands of color through her tail. Um, again, it wasn't exactly charted. I just kind of did it. Um, the other change is obviously on the original, the tail color or the, you know, she has like this color that goes all the way up her body, which I cut out. Um, and then I added her bust, um, her top. Um, I mean, it wasn't exactly charted. It was just kind of like I did it with my needle and thread. I mean, I guess I could go on there and, um, mark but again how do you do that without showing a pattern that doesn't belong to you so I just I don't know how conversions like that work um, I know like the big conversion that everybody talks about that's just gorgeous is uh, Bianca Bella being changed into more of the Disney princess um, Snow White as far as colors and stuff like that and that chart um, every time people ask for it they basically they say the same thing that um, they can't really show a conversion because it's showing a chart that is copyright. So I don't know if any of you guys have any ideas about that or what I should do, or if I should just, you know, say here, this is my photo of it for inspiration. You guys go to town. Um, you know, I mean, again, I could share the, the flounder. That's no problem. That is definitely my artwork, but uh, <laughs> such as it is. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so I don't know. Let me guys, let me, let me guys know, let me know what you guys think as far as that goes. Cause I don't, I don't want to feel like I'm being selfish or whatever, but I also don't want to do anything that's wrong. So that is a little bit difficult. So anyway, that was my stitching for the week. Um, I do not have any haul. Um, I actually have ordered, um, some plant bulbs, not, not bulbs like the plants are bulbs, but watering bulbs for my little garden thing. Um, I did find the paper that came with it on how you're supposed to water it. And it says like, cause there's moss all around it. You're supposed to feel underneath the moss, feel if it feels dry or not. And then lightly water around the edges. Um, so it hasn't felt dry to me yet. I mean, I've checked it several times. I've had it for a week. I think it's pretty well insulated, so it probably holds on to the moisture. But I thought it, you know, the plant bulbs might be a good way to go as far as watering it. Um, so I'm gonna try that. Um, and they're pretty, you know, the glass bulbs. Anyway, I'll show them to you next week because I'm supposed to be getting them today. Um, okay, so plans going forward. I'm just trying to get my stuff together. Um, trying to deal with being feeling tired, feeling worn out having anxiety, um, and trying to get little bits of stuff done around my apartment without feeling overwhelmed. Um, once this asphalting thing is done and I feel like that's behind me, um, I think that that will help because I feel like that's been looming over me and stressing me out and, um, work has been super, super busy. Um, I think I told you we're going through like this big conversion with our broker dealer at work and that's going to be happening in the middle of September and it's, it's kind of exciting, but super stressful and it's making work really busy. 
um, learning all that stuff. And then on top of that, we've had a couple of big clients and we had a big client pass away this past week. And so it's just a lot of work stuff on top of everything else. So, you know, my plans are just kind of to, to get my stuff together and to keep stitching and to just get my life where I'm feeling less overwhelmed. And I don't know if that's possible. You know, we always talk about when things get back to normal. And I, I feel like for me, sometimes this is normal. I mean, it's normal to feel overwhelmed and anxiety. <laughs> um, yeah, it's hard. You know, my brother, um, we had a family friend. Really, it was one of my brother's best friends from high school. Um, passed away this past week. Way too young. He was like, what, 52? Um, and the thing that got me is that you know, he was single, he was alone. I mean, he wasn't like, he didn't have friends, but he was still alone and had to call the paramedics and ended up having a massive heart attack after the paramedics got there. Um, and apparently had had really high blood pressure that none of his friends knew about. Um, you know, he's had anxiety and depression. He's battled that his whole life and he was a cancer survivor, all this stuff. And he's kind of been sick the last couple of weeks and apparently it was just worse than anybody knew. And that kind of, it it scares me, aside from feeling sad that this really nice guy has passed away too young, it scares me about being alone, being, you know? I mean, I don't mind being single, but the idea of being alone is scary. And it's, you know, it's scary when I think about um, Aaron and Stacy moving far away. And, you know, just that idea of, of you know, being alone. Um, I think sometimes that is a source of my of my stress and anxiety. It's just because sometimes it's just hard to deal with stuff on your own, you know? Because it's like everything falls on you. There's nobody else that you can pass anything off to or nobody else who can help relieve the burden of just day to day, you know, gosh, I need toilet paper kind of, you know, stuff. There's, you know, so sometimes it just gets to be overwhelming. And that's what my plans are for this week and going forward in the future is just to kind of get it all together <coughs> and just try and get stuff accomplished so I don't feel overwhelmed all the time. And you know, today to prepare for having to be out of my apartment for the next couple of days and just being on a weird schedule. Um, it'll be fun to be at Aaron and Stacy's for two nights, but you know, then I have to drive into work and hit traffic and um, so I just have a feeling I'm going to be kind of in a high state of anxiety for the next, you know, four days. Um, <clears throat> and I just want to try and deal with that. Um, but you know, I say all that and you know, I don't want to get, give the impression that I'm complaining. I know that I'm very blessed in my life to have the people that I have, to have the resources that I have. Um, I'm certainly not starving by any, uh, by any stretch of the imagination. Um, all my basic needs are met. Um, so, you know, I don't want to sound like I'm complaining. It's just, you know, I deal with, I deal with the crap of life just like everybody else. Um, but anyway, uh, that's what's going on with me. That's my stitching. And I think that's it for this video. Um, so until I see you guys again, please remember to be content be kind and be crafty. This is Carla. Bye-bye.